Ah, hello folks, welcome back. So today, I got a special treat for y'all. I decided to kind of treat myself with this video here, and decided to work on something a little more personal. So this little guy we have here is my very first D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, character I've ever created and painted. Not the model I created, I just bought it from WizKids. But this guy holds a pretty special place in my heart. He was the very first character, like I mean very first character I've ever played. Uh, sadly, I'm a forever DM, rip. <laughs> And the first character of mine I've ever turned into a DM NPC, which means that essentially I took one of my own characters I used to play and turn into a character in my little worlds I make, uh, my little homebrews. Except I turn him into a raid boss and make it so people have to challenge themselves to fight this guy in particular to see if they can win. Uh, this dude's name, quite edgy, it's gonna be funny, his name is Zerus Blackwing. I was a huge fan of World of Warcraft during when I made him, so Blackwing, you know, Blackwing's descent, <laughs> Deathwing and his thing, guys, Nefarian, you know, all that. And so I kind of based some of his stuff on that, and my thinking was I wanted to Oathbreaker Paladin, but do it in a way that was kind of kind of fun for me. It kind of sounds edgy at the time that I made it, but you know what? It works. This little guy here uh, used to be a... Uh, Paladin of the Light. I forgot what he was in 4.5, because in 5th edition I made him just a normal, like, Radiant Paladin and just had Oath of Conquest and all that stuff on it. But, um, eventually, uh, my DM at the time, who was a buddy of mine, we kind of played our sessions in high school art class, and so this little guy here had to essentially exercise a demon from a child's body, which in turn killed the child because of how strong the demon's grasp was, thus making my paladin both broken. <laughs> so, uh, he then became a uh, semi-villain. He went on his villain arc and started murking everything demon, including tieflings. Oops. Uh, I actually really like tieflings, but this guy did not. And so he kind of went on a path of vengeance and destruction and conquest and essentially became partly demonic himself over time from all the bloodletting and curses especially the fact that he didn't realize the demon went into his armor and blade and turned him into a black knight and that after a very long three minute introduction uh side panel <laughs> i am going to remake how i envision my guy to look proper this is kind of, I imagine, him looking before things went sideways. By the way, not too bad of a paint job being done, ooh, I don't know, seven years ago? Ooh. Actually, no, not not even seven. It's been longer than that. Oh, God, it's been, it's been, uh, nine years. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I feel old. <laughs> anyway, we're going to toss that man to the side. But put him proper. Put him in the corner here. Nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do some kit bashing because D and D. I mean, well, not D and D in particular, but uh, those are his miniatures. Decided to start making plastic models. So I bought the uh, Dragonborn Frameworks Paladin. And I am going to kick bash him so I can remake my boy Zerith. Uh, now, the cool part with these here is that they kind of... One, they finally did plastic instead of this weird poly... poly... polythyrene... wow, English. Polythyrene uh, plastic. Kind of like what you see on a lot of Reaper bone miniatures. Which, I also enjoy those. In fact, uh, here we go. It's a very much softer plastic. It's very, um, it's durable and kind of bendy at times. But it doesn't hold the most detail compared to other miniatures. For example, a 
Warhammer miniature has way more details because it's hard plastic and they probably designed it with MCAT or something, tiny little sculptors. Or even in comparison, some of the models provided by Reaper Miniatures has really, really good detail. Like, surprisingly so. Uh, but I was generally impressed that they finally made plastic models, and they look pretty baller. So what I'm going to be doing here is trying to essentially make my guy look how he did during his villain arc, which is when he was an Oathbreaker, and essentially turned into a totally not a reference to the Lich King whatsoever, uh, infernal raid boss in my homebrew campaigns. And uh, this video, I'm kind of rambling a lot, but really this is more of a personal one. You're kind of, you're kind of hanging out with me as I work on stuff. We're chilling here today. Uh, by the way, I got this at the dollar store. It's a cuticle cutter. Uh, I like this a lot more for smaller, for smaller miniatures because it gets right into those pesky little tiny pegs a lot easier than a larger clipper, if you will. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to go for his little feet. I'm going to clip those off first. And I like it too because it's a lot more flat at the bottom. So that gives you a more precise, flatter cut than uh, most ones. Uh, the closest that can get to this, though, would be War, War Games... Uh, plastic cutter, but it's kind of big for how small this guy is here. Yeah, so we're just kind of kit bashing this guy today. Mm -hmm. and this is where I'm going to have to actually use So Said War Gaming Cutter. This guy's my workhorse. He does all the big stuff. The cuticle one I've actually been using a lot for Gundam kits. Comes in handy. Oh boy. It's gonna be a tight fit. I'm just gonna gradually cut it here. Pop that out. And get right into that little groove here. I don't know where that piece flung, I'll find it later. <laughs> Use my secret tools, use my cutter here to go along the seam and just gently start going away at it here, just shaving it down. Same with the feet here. I want to carefully cut that off, make it more flat so that way everything sits nice and snug. Okay, then I'm going to be using this handy dandy thing. It's a little stick, sanding stick. I'm just going to get into that groove here, kind of work at it, get a little more refined. Get his little feet, his tiny feet. I'm pretty impressive. They kind of stuck to the similar scale. He's just a little bigger, but now he's proper modern heroic scale. And one thing I like to do whenever I am sanding and working on a model, one, I'm wearing something to cover my face so I don't breathe in all the dust, but I like to wet my finger with some water, oops, and just kind of brush it along in here so I can get all them little bits. And then get a little paper towel, kind of wipe it out, make sure there's nothing left, make sure you don't get a towel on it. Okay, so here's what we got so far. Things a little out of focus, but that's all right. So so far, we got this going on here. I like the details that they gave to the 
overall leather mat work. It's pretty cool. I'd say it's pretty close to what my guy was wearing. It's a nice, comfortable material. I like that he has a tail now, because I always envisioned him with a tail. Just realized it kind of cut too deep there, so now I need to make it even. There we go. Say goodbye to your nads. <laughs> Oh, just messing. Put some water in there. There we go. Okay. So that's where we're starting from. Genuinely, uh, genuinely, generally, I will kind of just build a miniature from here and then kind of spray paint it, then stick it to the base. But I'm going to do that in reverse order. So the clear bases are nice and all, but... I kind of prefer the Games Workshop bases. There's just something more nice and rounded about them. That kind of fits better to what I would like. And fun fact, a lot of the small, flat D&D bases you get are around the 25mm size that you would see on some wargaming bases. So he'll fit. Perfectly there. Whoops. So he'll fit nicely right atop it. I'm going to get some cork here and kind of just place it on the base. Kind of get a feel for what I want. Because I kind of want to give him a broken rubble sort of base. So we got this right here. Probably... Uh, break it here so he's like standing on top of it to break it more a little bit because eventually I'll put some small rocks and stuff on it just kind of break it in a certain way oh so, well, we got this right here we got that little piece and we kind of put them up here to make that more flat. Yeah. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Then I can fit some tiny rocks in there. I'm going to get some of this here. Uh, super gel glue. One of my favorites. Super glue normally is pretty good and all, but personally it's a little too runny. At least most of the brands I get. I like the gel glue because I can fit it to where I want it. And not have to worry about overspill. Thank you again, Dollar Store, for providing all of the fun stuff. <laughs> you can save a lot on your hobbying if you go to the places like the Dollar Store and Hobby Lobby. They got a lot of good stuff going on. Okay. So here's how we're looking here. I'm going to put my little guy ooh, somewhere. Okay, he's going to be here. He has a little... Ooh, okay. So his feet are pretty well adjusted for height. So I can kind of have him standing atop, and that way he can, like, do some cool pose. Or I can... Add another spot here, some overhang, make it look like he's stabbing his sword in the ground. That's going to be a little hard to do, but it'll be cool. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that. So we're going to get some more cork, kind of break it off. Extend it to the side here by kind of shoving it in there. <laughs> okay. There we go. Then we can do that little pose. Yeah, now that's looking pretty cool. And usually I'll pin, put some stuff in it, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna 
super glue him to the base there so I can just work from that and not have to worry about drilling and pinning and all that other shenanigans. So here we're going to plant him pretty firmly on here, kind of hold him for a few seconds, making sure it's a tight fit. Nice, 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 nice. Even later, I'm going to put some glue here. Actually, I can do that while I'm working on him. I'll just have to put him on a the holder. So we're going to put him right here. There we go. Yeah, that could be drying as I'm working on him. So far, the update's going pretty good. I'm liking it so far. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, this video is going to be a little more laid back. Essentially, I'm kind of treating this like if I was streaming it. There's not really going to be much edits. The only thing really is I'm going to be uh, trimming some stuff here and there. Uh, adding some music. I don't know why I'm saying that in post-production, but, you know, it's cool. <laughs> Alright, next up. Huh. I need to work on that body now. Okay, so he has two heads here. He has a helmeted knight drake helm, which looks pretty cool. And he has a normal dragonborn head. I'm going to compare them, see how I feel about it, because with the scale he's at and how they've made the new dragonborn heads to be kind of more slender, more form-fitting, and kind of squat. I think I can get away with using some more hammerheads for my Chaos Knights. Because I want to give them a Chaos Knight shield and some stuff from their faction to kind of pimp out my guy. So I'm going to put some blue tech there. It's always good to use that while you're planning. Okay, so there's the normal head. Hmm, I'm not entirely feeling that head. I kind of imagine him with giant horns. So we'll pop that off. We'll put on the paladin helm. That looks a lot more cool. Oh, dropped it. <laughs> now that looks like a proper Night Paladin for Dragonborn. Actually, yeah, you know what? We'll keep it simple. We'll just stick with that and then we could add some like apparel and stuff on the back. Let's get that blue tack off. I gotta carefully remove these little tags here and not damage the plastic. Now it is, it is plastic, so I can use plastic glue, but honestly, I'm not sure how this kind of plastic will affect, be affected by plastic glue. So I'm just going to play it safe and use super glue on this one. Okay, so his head goes this way, which is pretty good for how I want his appearance.
Just a little dab here. <laughs> Wobbly. Okay. And just to make sure his head is properly aligned with his position. Yeah. Okay. We're off to a good start. And my guy has a flaming sword, but I kind of like the chaos swords. So we are going to do some... We're going to do some stuff here. We're going to do some magic. Let's see here. So he also had a cloak. Couldn't really do that with the old one, but now I could do it with the new one. Um, but I'm not too set on this cloak. Whoops. I mean, it fits nicely here. Very heroic. Majestic even. But, I have a chaos cloak somewhere. Chaos bit bin. All the bits. <laughs> you got to look for my sword too, somewhere in here. I got a few chaos swords. Uh, nah. I could add some skulls to his base. Maybe snip off some of these flaming ones. Kind of put it somewhere on here. Maybe in the front if I didn't have that cork. Although I could remove the cork. You know what? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. I mean, I spent all that time putting the cork there. Now I'm just going to rip it off. <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. Now I'm going to want to cut this section off right here. And this is from a blood litter kit. It's a spare one. It's going to warp that poor little skull on this side, but that's okay. I can hide that with some movie magic, aka basing material. We could just fit the skulls nice and snug there. Gonna have to clip away some more. Or at least cut. Eee. Scary. Cork. Really good material. But once there's super glue involved, it becomes like brick. But not bricky. <laughs> Just doing a dry fit, seeing how I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm gonna cut off this other skull around here though. Don't mind me. <laughs> I dropped the bit. There we go. Okay. Now we got those. I can just shove that here. Do I want this look or do I want this look? This looks better. So I'm going to kind of fit it in here. Kind of stab it into the side there. Oh yeah, that's looking cool. That's looking super cool already. I'm gonna shave the sides here in a little bit.
just one more little clean up here. There we go. Now we got it nice and cleaned for that spot. Let's just mount this stack of skulls right here. Call it good. That way when you turn it, you got some other ones snuck there. I don't know. I'm not so sure about the skull on top. Yeah, I'll leave it. It's a nice little little thing. Just kind of mess around with it, kind of place it in a good spot. Yeah. That looks right. I can add some sand and some other basing material to kind of hide the little nooks and cracks there. Then I could put the other skull right here. There we go. Good spot. Now this here is going to be tricky because Zerus has a giant gash in his helm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully, not too much, I'm going to carefully put a gash right here in his helm. Kind of just work at cutting it out here. The reason why I gotta be careful is I can easily squish the plastic to not do that. There we go. That looks like a sword kind of got chinked on the side there and scratched it. Scratched it up. Could be a little, little deeper though. I think I went too deep, but that's okay. I could just work with it right here. And I can add like little, little highlights here, make it glow, because he's infernal. So he's kind of crackling on the inside like f fire, fire coming out from there. do have some fire right here so I can cut that off and kind of sneak into that little hole I need to find some a good one though I could sculpt it but I'm kind of lazy <laughs>
Okay, then I just gently place it in that little spot. I mean, I could sculpt the fire to be more size to it, a little better detailed, but it's a kit bash after all. And I kind of want to have fun just doing something a little more simple. Because if I really wanted to go ham, I would sculpt the guy myself. Ooh, now it looks like he has a weird demonic horn coming out of his head. Yeah. Okay, cool. Trying to think here, because he wears a pelt. I could have fixed it in a way where it looks like ethereal smoke coming out of his body. I kind of, eh, too much. Keep it simple. That unironically actually looks kind of cool, but he's not a paladin. I mean, well, he's a paladin. He's not a, he's not a brawler. But that just looks kind of cool. And a surprisingly good fit for Warhammer models. At least Warhammer Fantasy, their heroic scale, a little better than Space Marines and stuff like that. I mean, that arm could work. Hmm, I'll think on that one. I mean, I could kick it old school and give him a banner, like what you'd see in fantasy. <laughs> hmm. Let's see here. What else can we do? Okay, so after digging through my bit spin for a while, I found some pretty nifty bits. 
So since I've been building models for a while, I got a lot of chaos bits, and so I found a good amount. I found the perfect cloak to put on my guy. So originally, there's that one, but I found this one right here, and I thought the fur would look kind of cool. You know, it would be very regal. Still showing he had some sort of style, even though he's like a bad guy now. It has some good movement. Until I found this. This is from a Warhammer, a Warhammer Age of Sigmar uh, Chaos Knight, like literally a knight for chaos, not the 40k knight. But I like how battered and torn the cloak is and how the movement is. If it's nice and snug onto Zerus's back, I just have to cut off that shoulder piece there. But his sword right here is perfect because I've always had him with a demon sword that has a bunch of spikes and tassels and like a fox tail at the end right here because that's how he was he always had the sword like this is his first sword now it's all corrupted looking so I'm gonna carefully clip away at this here because I do not need that that piece off and I'll have to shave it from here but generally I want it to kind of be right there Okay, so we got that pretty much taken care of. We are gonna get the knife here, kind of just shave all these random bits. Just removing those spikes, I'm not removing the smaller ones. Okay, let's do a dry fit, see how that's looking. Perfect. Just gonna have to cut off this part here. And then, yeah, 
That's looking nice. So we're gonna have to glue it right here. Then I'm gonna have to do some magic with my gap filler. Just fill in those little gaps. But overall, love it. So it's gonna go somewhat in the middle position. It's about right here. No more, no more that way. Oh yeah, that that's looking super cool. Then I'll get my gap filler and kind of fill in those little cracks here and there so it looks even. And I can hide part of it with some of these little parchment papers because my guy Zerus would always write on pieces of parchment and then put it on his armor and overall outfit to show the good deeds he's done. So let's say he helped save a kingdom, which he did. He wrote the name and title of that kingdom and what he did so he would always remember because he never had the best memory. Then he still has his dread spines or whatever. kind of want to put him somewhere. So maybe like a, nah, maybe cut him off. Now that's looking pretty cool so far. Now I gotta figure out what to do for the shield. And speaking of shields, I found a extra shield I had that I cut off from another Dragonborn Now I was kit bashing for a friend. It's the same one. So I'm gonna cut this up and shove it somewhere, probably right here in the little corner. As like a little homage to his older self. So I kind of want to clip it sideways here. And kind of, I don't know if I want to shove it to the front. As like some little storytelling that he's killed a bunch of people. And kind of forlone him himself. I will. I'm just going to have to cut it up a little more. I could like stick it right here and then use the other half that I cut off, kind of put in the corner over here. Yeah, this half, just kind of shank it into the corner here. Am I doing too much to his base? Maybe. Is it going to look cool? Possibly. Am I having fun? Yes. Cut some indents into it. Kind of show it's been through a rough. Had some chunks in it. Then we just kind of put it over here where the skulls are. Because my idea here is I kind of want to tell the story as I'm working on him. Like a visual, visual story. You're like, oh, what is this cool looking paladin guy? Why does he look the way he does? What's up with all the skulls and the weird broken shield? As I then put him on a tabletop and have my friends fight against it. <laughs> and hope for the best. Because he is a level 20 
Oathbreaker, Pact of the Fiend, uh, Paladin Warlock, so he is ready to ball. I, of course, gave him some special abilities since he is uh, supposed to be a boss. Whoops. There's this little piece right here kind of messing with what I'm trying to do. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I just broken shield. It's all snapped and stuck in the rocks. Okay, now we gotta do that tassel thing, but before I put on those, I should probably figure out where <coughs> excuse me. Where his sword arm's gonna go. Cause another thing about my guy is he wields multiple weapons. So he has his original corrupted blade, and he has a little side axe here, and then his main left hand is gonna have a sword as well. Kinda reminiscent of what's going on here, but in a different position. And uh, the axe, I gotta sneak in a little corn here. That's my faction in 40k. <laughs> it's kind of cool though, because the hand here, uh, right here, it has a metal glove part. So what I can do is I can chop off the fingies here and kind of use that to hide the blade. It's a little bigger than I thought, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Yeah, and I also figured I should probably put the parchment pieces on after I put together the rest of him. Probably be a smart idea. I can easily sculpt a lot of these, like, tassels and cloaks and stuff like that, but i rather show that it you can kit bash pretty much what you want to do and not feel bad that you can't sculpt. Like, I can sculpt pretty alright, I'm just not completely the best at it yet. That's a good spot for him. That's a good spot for his little weapon because there's a piece of rope and it'll look like he can I mean leather and it'll look like he kind of attached a metal bearing to it to hold his axe just kind of push it in and it will inadvertently assist with holding that cloak up in that corner and kind of hide a little bit of it over here Tell you what though, I'm really paying, praying to the super glue gods on this one. Oh yeah, that's looking cool. A little busy, but eh. 
It's my guy. He's supposed to be kind of crazy looking. Now, I will need the Framework's sword arm. Because that is where I'm going to put his flaming sword. And then this is his sword arm. It's going to be like that. Then I'm going to glue that over here. I actually kind of like the position. So that way his arm's sticking out for it like that, holding the weapon. Honestly, I'm very impressed with the framework miniature models. They look really good. And it combos nicely with that cloak. Then right here, I got the flame sword. It's gonna stick right on here somewhere. So it awkwardly just kind of goes up right there. So I'm going to have to shape that or cut it. I'm sorry if I'm not engaging as much with you viewers during this, but as I mentioned, you're kind of just hanging out with me as I'm kind of working along the process of reimagining my first D&D &D character. And eventually I'll probably do a video on me drawing him too. That'd be kind of cool. Kind of little update. League of Legends visual update. <laughs> This part definitely needs some super glue. It's a very small connection point that I can't even put together with a paper clip pin method. Just gotta be very careful with this one. God, that makes me so nervous, but whatever. <laughs> That, that, oh, it is off center, great. I'm just going to put some super glue on the side. It's going to make it all gloopy, but at least I could trim that after. That thing is making me very nervous. 
I mean, I can also resin, like get some UV and put it there, but I don't feel like taking it out right now. <laughs> All right, so far, he's looking pretty baller. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm liking it. I got to sneak in his little parchment that I was talking about earlier. Put it right there. It's a good spot. In hindsight, I should probably keep those off so that way I can write on it. Because I plan on using a calligraphy pen instead of a normal... A calligraphy ink pen to write very small words on these instead of doing the paintbrush method. But I kind of want to build it together just to kind of get it together. Thank you, Skaven Plague Monks, for all of your parchment paper. Ooh, that is a perfect spot. It, it naturally just kind of goes in that little corner. Now, glob. I just realized it's going to be a pain painting this guy because I'm going to be doing all sorts of stuff and trying to get in those little cracks, but whatever. That's a problem for future soul. Right now, present soul is having fun building his guy. Yeah, that's coming along very nicely. Could probably stick one over here on his sore or axe. Yeah, I could put one on his axe. Yeah, literally, that sword just called a flaming sword. I call this one here Demon Piercer. <laughs> Back in the day, I know. <laughs> Again, super edgy. But I guess now I could call it the Mortar. Uh, mortar. It's not a cannon. The mortal, mortal avarice, mortal's avarice, something like that. Mortal, mortal's turmoil. There we go. The axo I call <laughs> uh, the life taker for obvious reasons. Hmm. Yeah, here we go. We just put that right there on that little metal piece. Oh yeah, see that's one, two, three, yep, because he only did three good deeds before he became a bad guy. <laughs> but they're pretty big, one was saving saving a town, one was saving a kingdom, and the other was saving his, uh, his best friend, who's a drow that is now married to a kobold. <laughs> Yeah, she's fun. Okay, now to do the shield arm. This is gonna be a little more tricky because I'm using this. I found the perfect chaos shield for what I wanted to represent with my guy because after dealing with the demon being in his body, he figured out how to bound it not only to his armor, but to his shield and sword. So the sword's kind of demonic now, his shield is demonic. But the shield I wanted to have represent the actual demon stuck in it. And luckily, Age of Sigmar, again, has that perfect shield. And it even has little runes here, so I can glow those to make it look like a, a seal. 
But now, I gotta find this guy's arm, so I can put it there. But I also gotta figure out how to build that shield arm. A4 and AB. Ah, we're using Gundam logic on this one. Okay. There's AB. Okay, I got the shield. I hit my head. Ow. Okay, now I gotta build the arm. So here's the shield. Here's the actual shield. And luckily, I can do some magic here and shave away and use that part to put the arm on. Before that, I'm just going to trim it a little more. Kind of makes it uneven, so I kind of want to make it even. Just shave off a lot of that. Make it as flat as possible. There we are. Then I can hide that shield with the shield. <laughs> but really though, I'm going to be cutting that off just in a hopefully straight line. So I still have the leather straps there. Yee. Okay, sweet. And I can just glue it there. Awesome. I'm just gonna shave that, make it more clean. Try not to cut my finger in the process. Now we just kind of stick that in there nice and tightly. I can add some fun effects where I can put more of my gap filler in here and kind of shoot it about with some super glue, make it look like flesh. Kind of like the demon's really a part of the shield now. And here is a shield arm. Yeah, definitely giving him the raid boss treatment. Just making it look like some Final Fantasy World of Warcraft ass looking fool. Ready to just murder a bunch of <laughs> poor players who are trying to see if they can beat the guy in the first place. Little Dark Souls too, kind of fit in. I was a pretty big into Dark Souls during the time too. Man, they really just nailed the Dragonborn Paladin look here. Yeah, I'll leave the shield off. Because that is actually going to really get in the way of me painting the rest of him. 
I'm just gonna blue tack it so you guys can see how the boy looks. Oh, there he is. Ha 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 ha. He looks super cool now. So I'm kind of nerding out right now because this is how I've always imagined my my Dragonborn Paladin looking and he looks super cool. <laughs> I'm like nerding out really hard right now. <laughs> I'm nerding out. Oh. <laughs> That's super cool looking. So we got the Chad Demon Host Paladin who butchers, evildoers, and heroes alike. Then we got the Virgin Dragonborn trying to be his little knight self. <laughs> yup. That, that about does it. That, that looks super cool. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching this long, kind of laid back video. Uh, I, I usually would edit my videos, but this one I kind of just wanted, as I mentioned, to just relax and kind of just chill as you guys watch me work on this piece and just kind of going through the motions of having happy memories of D&D &D and stuff while I'm working on it. Uh, I kind of really got into it, so I didn't talk as much. Sorry about that, y'all. But, uh, thank you very much for watching me build my reimagined Demonic Knight Dragonborn Paladin Man. And, uh, stay tuned for the painting video on this and the concept art and actual art drawing poster of him as well in a future video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope all of y'all take care. Have a good one.